today is going to be recording. Well, this is, I'm just going to show you now a uh, quick look at my electric bike. Converted, this is what we've got. Basically, this is a giant Trans X3 um, with a, a uh, kit from China. The back wheel is motorized. There's a motor there in the back wheel, that hub is motorized. I've sprayed that black, it was actually horrible silver and chrome. Um, so I sprayed that black. Uh, <coughs> what's good about this bike is it's got adjustable suspension which you need and fairly strong disc brakes so I could probably do with bigger ones. So this is the front brake. Now the back brake with this Chinese kit, um, you can see there I've got a 7 inch disc on there um, which had to be drilled out wider because the Chinese one supplied the very small disc only came to about there and the drill holes of course were totally non-standard as, as usual so I had to drill this slightly wider out so it'll fit the thing and also you'll see if you can see in there in that gap there there's a that's the original um, thing for the block basically for mounting the disc brake to I had to get a spacer made up 10 mil that is 10 mil width there to push this disc out so it lines up correctly with the rear brake caliper so I didn't have to move this around so I've got a 10 spacer in there and longer 20 mil these are M5 uh, bolts going into there so that's just basically a spacer goes through there bolts onto there that screws onto the wheel also got a um, a brace here, a high tensile steel brace which is cut to the profile of that and is jubilee clipped around there. This is basically to stop the axle wanting to turn in the in the alloy frame. I don't want to knack of the, the swimming arm, swinging arm, sorry. So that just stops, not that it probably won't move because it's quite solid in there, but that just stops any axle twist which would, uh, you know, torque twist which would ruin this. I've got these um, Schwabel Marathon Supreme tyres on which have got a very round profile if you look at them which is excellent. I did have normal mountain, mountain bike tyres with uh, knobblies on but they're absolutely useless. The profile is usually quite square uh, they make a lot of road noise and cornering is absolutely terrible on them the the walls are quite uh, thin on the other tyres so they kind of collapse and, and fold like that and also there's no grip on the edge so having these round tyres on means I can really corner well and bank well with it. Um, so yeah there's the rear motor, um, there's the power lead coming out of there which goes into this bag which is supplied. Now the battery's in here, the battery actually only comes up to, if you see my hand there, about that. So it's really, there is the battery in there. Now you might think it's a bit strange putting it in a bag and nothing solid, but this is quite good. I can remove it quite quickly and easily. Um, it's soft, uh, which means there's no impact, it's got the holes already. Also one advantage is that you've got, if I leave the front open like this, it acts as an air vent so that some air can get in there, ideally. And there's also, you can see there, the silver thing is the controller that comes with it. So that's all wired in, uh, through to there. There's the um, what's up meter, just showing, I don't know if you can actually read any of that anyway. But that's working, that just shows me what currents I'm drawn. So I'll leave that out there so I can see that when I'm running and it's all quite safe and some air gets in there. So it's soft, removable. The main point about having it here is the weight is centralised. Uh, I've tried putting a, a mounted it up here, I've had it down here in panniers, I've had the battery everywhere. This is absolutely the best place. It makes sense, it's more like where a motorbike engine would be. There's some foam protection both inside the bag and there's some outside there, just stopping it piercing the bag or, or causing any uh, bad bashes to the, the battery itself. There is some padding in the bag but it's not sufficient so I've got extra padding in there. So yeah, battery and controller in this bag. Could be a bit smaller but that was a bag supply and it seems, it seems to work quite well. Um, thumb throttle up here with a kill switch uh, which again just, just roots down and into the bag. Um, quite a lot of pressure in the front shocks. Hell of a lot in fact because with low pressure it was diving a lot under braking. It just about stops with these disc brakes, it could do with bigger ones, but you need, uh, I think there's 150 pounds in the front and probably close to 300 in the rear. Um, you can see how much it's travelling, it's travelling quite a bit. I've driven these without suspension, you definitely need, this is, this is the ultimate, for me, this is the ultimate setup really. 
um, it corners well, it handles the bumps, it's well balanced, you can balance, you can, you know, you can stop uh, you can stop on a pin and, 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 and stand without putting your feet down, it's quite easy to balance. Um, it's fantastic basically. So that's it, it's a Giant X3, not really modified and all I'd have to do to change this would be, you know, to back to a normal bike, take the bag off, the thumb throttle, a couple of cable ties. Oh, I had to drop this, I had to drop the brake caliper down slightly, remove the spacers out, only about 4 mil. Uh, just so that's lined up with the top of that um, that disc, which is a Hayes disc. Uh, so, but I'd have to put those back in, and the wheel should well, take this off and the Jubilee clip. But it's not it's not a long job really to swap that out. I would definitely recommend these these low pro, uh, round profile tyres, called balloon tyres. They're absolutely fantastic. You don't want mountain bike tyres on this at all. It makes them very very dangerous, especially in the wet. Uh, there's not much else to say about this really, it's a pretty standard bike. Not, oh right, yes, there is a, one thing about this, I'm, you'll see I'm in this gear which is a bit strange, it's about the second cog down the front and the big one on the front. The chain's almost straight so it's not too bad. I can't move into any other gear, if I move higher the derailleur arm there will rub onto the hub, move any lower again it's more rela relaxed and that moves down onto the hub. So I can't change back gears, not that you need to, it's only, you're only really pedalling when you're setting off. Uh, I could change the front, I've still got the ability to change the, uh, the front gearing, but the rear one is stuck in that gear basically. And another reason for that is this cable here is actually going between the two levers, so I can't push them accidentally, which is quite a good thing. You'll notice this lever is not mounted straight up, because straight up when you've got this fully down, which you have most of the time, uh, it's right underneath and it really hurts your thumb so I found it angling it this way when it's fully down it's only down to about here which makes it a lot easier to keep pressed down without hurting your thumb too much I much prefer it to a twist throttle okay so oh, it's a 48 volt uh, 20 amp hour ping battery in there um, which seems to do quite well at the moment I'm going to get in about 23 miles but I think the battery may I haven't been using this for a while because after my fixed uh, my, my old bike which basically dropped to bits it didn't have suspension, it had uh, rim you know, V-brakes and stuff and it was absolutely useless with that much power and front wheel drive so I've, I've you know, changed quite a lot of mess around um, so I can't think of anything else to rabbit on about so we'll go for a ride and see how it goes <laughs> 